And hello, everyone, and welcome to the podcast by Biomimicry Innovation Lab. And this is where we speak to the latest food and agricultural innovators from across the UK and around the world. My name is Richard James McCowan. And with me, I've got Yuning. Say hello, Yuning. Hi, everyone. I'm a designer and researcher at Biomimicry Innovation Lab. And today we are interviewing Rodrigo Garcia Gonzalez, who's the co-founder and co-CEO of NotPla. Say hello, Rodrigo. Hello, Richard. Hello, Yulene. So NotPla is a sustainable packaging startup that was set up in 2014. And they've got a mix of designers, chemists, engineers and entrepreneurs. And what they're doing is they're looking at creating novel packaging solutions from seaweed and other biomaterials to um, alleviate the use of single-use plastics. They've won awards from and grants from Innovate UK, the Ellen Carter Foundation, and that's focusing on their uh, first product called Ooh, or Ooh, or however you want to pronounce it. When you see it, you get a bit excited. Um, and this is an edible and fully biodegradable sachet. They're now working on other uh, novel solutions. Now, uh, Rodrigo and Pierre, the co-founders, started their um, experience at Skipping Rock Labs, which they actually started up from the course called Innovation Design Engineering, which Yuning actually graduated from as well, um, which is a joint venture between Imperial College London and the Royal College of Art. And the team are now uh, uh, not plan, uh, been crowdfunding and developing the business. They're actually now developing manufacturing hubs and they're based in the east end of London. They've been invested in by Sky Ocean Ventures and they've got experience in linking up to a number of companies from around the world. So the purpose of this uh, podcast is not to just talk about project. We're going to start off with 73 rapid fire questions. So I hope you're ready, Rodrigo. Oh, I, I don't know if I'm ready, but uh, let's go for it. Oh, here we go. And if you can't get my accent, well, I, I will repeat it. But yeah, just it's a bit of fun. So number one, what's the best thing that happened to you this month? I think maybe coming to Lisbon, I just came uh, yesterday. So that was a highlight of this month. I hope the weather's better than it is in the UK. <laughs> it's a bit better. <laughs> okay. And what's your favorite board game? Oh, I, I like a lot of board games. Uh, Agricola, I don't know if many people know that game, but like it's a pretty good board game. Oh, people should know. Ticket to Ride or uh, Catan are uh, pretty good as well. When are you most inspired? I suppose when uh, when I'm away from my day to day context. So when I have new inputs, I think it's when not only me but like most of the people are inspired the most. Yeah, it's a really interesting um, podcast I was listening to, and I'll share it in the links afterwards um, about that, and I'll share it with you, Rodrigo, as well. Okay, here's mm -hmm. a tough one because I know you teach as well. If you could teach one subject in school, what would it be? Ooh. Oh, oh, actually, I had the chance to teach in a school. And I was teaching a quite unusual subject in a school. It was architecture. So, and that was quite fun uh, and design. So I think I will stick with that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> right. What's your favorite drink? I think any anything related with juices. I love fruits uh, and juices. Nice. What is the best compliment you've ever received? Ooh, I don't know. Uh, trying to, my mom say like, main aspiration is to become a good person. So anything that relates with that. I think it's, it's the best compliment that you can ever receive. Oh, that's rather sweet. Yuning's yeah. nodding her head there as well. <laughs> yeah. And it's a tough one. What's your favorite birthday cake? Oh, I'm not, I'm not too into sweets, uh, but uh, I will say a homemade cake that uh, shows the, the love for someone, I think is the, is the best one. It could be really simple, but uh, I think I, I will stick with that. Here's a, you've kind of tied to this, but what's the one thing you still have from your childhood? Mm, I have a lot of memories, I suppose, of my childhood. I still am I'm quite glad that the, my parents kept the house that where I grew up. So I have a lot of uh, memories uh, in that place. And uh, still, when I come back, it's almost coming back to my childhood with my brother and my sister playing games that we were playing when we were teenagers. So that's pretty good. That's great. You still get your own bedroom there? Yeah, yeah. I you still do. have my bedroom there with the... Uh, Full things and, and normally when I travel to my parents' house, I, I don't I, I don't pack anything. So I just dress up for uh, the time that I'm there with the same clothes as I was when I when I was 15 years old. So all the t-shirts with uh, big uh, logos and things like that is quite it's quite interesting. <laughs> I think I've got one t-shirt left when I was a child. What is your favorite movie? 
Ooh, um, I like for a while quite a lot Achero Mañas, a Spanish director, and he has one movie specifically called Noviembre. It's about a theater group. So it's, it's a good movie. Nice. What is something you cannot do? Oh, I'm, I'm quite bad at languages. So I have tried for a, well, I have been speaking English for a while, but like quite poorly. And uh, I try a lot of other languages like French, Italian, and, and I have never succeeded. Well, you can speak two languages, which is more than I can at least. <laughs> well. Okay. Well, you're going to fly window or aisle seat? A window. Why? <laughs> Is it because well, like- uh, it's, it's, it's great to be able to to look where you are going and uh, it's quite inspiring as well coming back to inspiration to see all these clouds and uh, this perspective of the earth and what's happening and, and I think it's always really therapeutic to to have the window uh, on a flight unless it's a long haul flight and you have to climb over people <laughs> yeah exactly what makes you laugh no matter what Mm, mm, I have quite good friends from uh, theater and they are always laughing. So it's impossible n- to, not to be close to them and not be laughing. So it's a, a good person who laughs. Uh, it's, it's quite contagious. So I will say uh, it's not a what, but uh, it's, it, yeah. When I'm uh, close to some friends uh, like Javier Pastor or like some friends, some friends who are always laughing are, are always contagious. I've got friends like that as well. We're at, we're at like 12 year olds, even though we're all um, in our yeah. adulthood now. <laughs> yeah. And it's quite therapeutic as well. It's yeah. like having a, a window to happiness. <laughs> yes. So leading on to that, what does creativity mean to you? I suppose it's the, um, the ability to rethink uh, how the world is made uh, in different ways or to, to be able to express yourselves uh, in... in in a unique, maybe even not unique way, but uh, yeah, expression basically. A nice answer. Yeah. What are your favorite lyrics, song lyrics of all time? Um, I would say, um, oh, it's hard to say lyrics. Um, there is quite a lot of Spanish lyrics, but uh, might not be recognizable by the audience. So I would say, let it be by the Beatles. An easy one. <laughs> yeah, easy one. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. What's your favorite holiday? Apart from going to Lisbon, obviously, to see your family. Mm, I had really good time in India, for example. Yeah. It's a it's a place full of uh stimulus and uh yeah, inputs in terms of smells, movement, colors, uh life in general. And I really enjoy it. I, I don't know if it's a place to rest but like a place to get inputs definitely there's actually uh there's an article in the guardian about that and there's actually people getting this india psychosis where they're completely mm-hmm. forgetting where they're overly um absorbed in the place and actually not go traveling home huh. and taking huh. to hospitals and mental health problems because they're having a breakdown because they've been overstimulated mm-hmm. by the culture and the colors mm-hmm. and the sounds yeah a lot of people there <laughs> Okay, what what music is heavily played on your playlist right now? So I have been for the last week, as I knew I was coming to Lisbon, I was listening to Fados uh, non-stop. That is the Portuguese music, <laughs> traditional music. The chap I like to sing Portuguese is Katia. Is it Catiano Valesso? Um, yeah, Catiano Valesso. Yeah, I like yeah, his guitar. Yeah, 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 it's quite nice. I have no mm-hmm. idea what he's saying, but it's quite nice. Okay, is it, if you could raid one design studio whose would it be famous friends anyone no i have quite a lot of studios actually i have a little page where i have uh, uh, i put uh, it's called like when i grow up i want to be like dot 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 and i every time i find a studio or a designer that i really like i save it there and then i have a few from historical ones like max bill or back mr fuller uh to to really recent ones i don't know like max lamb i really enjoy or uh, dave hunkers uh from precious plastic uh, i met him as well it's quite quite inspirational so i will say one of them cool okay what is your must-have design item must-have design item um 
I carry with me uh, quite a lot some of the vessels that my grandparents were using to, to drink wine or water. Um, so that traditional vessels made from leather or ceramics called Botijo and Bota. And I, I really enjoy to have this little collection. Uh, a bit more contemporary, I I bought a lamb from Konstantin Girik, uh that at when 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 I was uh, an intern in Barcelona, he had a really dark room and I invested, but it was quite cheap the room. But I invested a bit in this lamp and I have been keeping it since then in all the countries that I have been traveling to uh, to live for a while. So so that has been a bit the the design element uh, or product that I have been carrying around. I said it's boring then because I, I just have a black pen. I like using these pens. So I buy them in bulk. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> right. Back to your childhood. What did you want to be when you grew up when you were 12? So what do you think you wanted to be? Yeah, I think I always like this idea of the inventor. Uh, it's not a clear career route, I suppose. But I, I should I think it relates a bit with what I'm doing at the moment. Uh, which is quite gratifying to to find out. Uh, yeah. Good. All right. Last question from me, and then we'll pass the evening. What is something you will not be doing in ten years? Uh, something that I won't be doing in ten years. Um, not sure. Uh, hopefully, we could have been solving a bit this problem that we're facing now of uh, single-use packaging to a certain extent. So hopefully we can move to the next problem <laughs> that society has. So let's see if we can be in a, in a space in 10 years' time where we have already contributed a bit towards this issue. So we, yes. hopefully we don't we don't have it. See, my answer to that is my accounts. I would get somebody else to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, I'm going to have a break and I'm going to pass you over to the 21st question, over to Yuning. Perfect. It's my turn now. Um, what is an important life lesson for someone to learn? Uh, important life lessons, I suppose, to to take mistakes as learnings and and to approach them with positive attitude and to to embrace them. So I suppose that's that's an important lesson for everyone to learn, and it's not an easy one. Yeah, totally. You always mm -hmm. need to like really experience that to really know. Yeah. Um, how will you start your day? So I try to have some habits uh, in order to start my day. Sometimes I start with a bit of exercise. Sometimes I start with reading. Uh, sometimes I start yeah, with planning a bit the, the day. Uh, so it really depends because I'm, I'm not the most consistent person either. Uh, but yeah, and, and sometimes a, a hot drink, it always helps to start the day. <laughs> a drink? In the morning. Yeah. Wow, nice. Um, will you ever live anywhere else in the world? Yes, absolutely. I'm really open to to live uh, anywhere else. I had the chance to live in in Chile, in South America, in the north of Sweden, mm -hmm. in India for a bit, in Spain for a bit, in UK. So I'm, I'm quite open to to see where uh, destiny takes us. I would love to live in Amazon. Oh, Amazon Park. <laughs> that would be lovely. Yeah. Like mosquitoes. <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite desert? Dessert. Sorry. Dessert. <laughs> uh, as I was saying before, I really love fruits. So anything that is fruit related, especially my grandma who's still alive, he prepares some type of uh, salad fruits that they are delicious. So anything on on that front, I I really love. My favorite is strawberry tart. <laughs> nice. Is there a dessert that you don't like? Yeah, everything that is really, really sweet, I'm, I'm, I'm not into, into that. What will you eat uh, for brunch? I will try to go for the veggie option. Uh, in UK, sometimes it's not the easiest or the tastiest, but uh, it's, it's normally what I try to have. Okay. Um, where was the best holiday you've ever taken? You kind of mentioned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I kind of mentioned, but just to say something else, uh, I was in South Africa just before COVID and it was really lovely. Really enjoyed it. Or oh, I spent yeah. a bit some time as well in Senegal. Uh, it's a country that not too many people probably know in terms of holidays destination, but like it's, it's really, yeah, it's really vibrant as well. 
Well, I really want to ask, uh, where did you guys go for Go Global? Uh, we went to Go Global to Australia. So we went to Sydney. Go Global is this uh, project that as part of this program that we study in London, uh, they do where they they bring you out of your comfort zone and you spend, uh, I think it's almost a month uh, somewhere else. And in in my case, it was many years ago, almost 10 years ago, we went to work with a Paralympic team in Australia. It was a bit related with the, the Olympics and it was quite lovely. And then with some friends, we took a bit of a trip as well to New Zealand afterwards. That was really, really nice as well. Uh, we went to uh, Kenya. Ooh. And then we go to like uh, safaris and stuff, seeing a wow. lot of cats. <laughs> nice. <Anyway>. Yeah. <laughs> um, what's your favorite Disney animal? Um, I really like Baloo from the Jungle Book. Buscalo más, vitalo más, lo que es necesitarlo más. Mamá naturaleza te lo da. That's it. That's now recorded for everybody to hear. Yeah. For all the terms. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's <laughs> Um, what is the book that you're planning to read? The book that I'm planning to read, I have at the moment, uh, I started recently fencing. So I'm, I'm reading everything that I can find about fencing. And one of the books that I have is from Arturo Perez Reverte, one Spanish author, and it's called The Fencing Master. Uh, so it's a novel based on Madrid in the 18th century, I think. Fiction. Uh, fiction. We all have fiction. <laughs> <laughs> um what did you read most recently um what i read most recently i read a book called atomic habits uh oh. non-fiction non-fiction <laughs> <laughs> um what's your favorite solo artist my favorite solo artist um bruce spristin okay Hmm. Um, what is something that you're tired of? I'm tired of COVID. Yeah, I think everyone is tired of COVID. Hopefully it goes away. Really, really cool. No. Um, you kind of mentioned this as well. What's the city that you wish to visit? Um, I'm really looking forward. I've never been to Mexico. Mm -hmm. So Mexico DF, I'm, I think I'm... Uh, I'm really up for it. Yeah, I heard it's a really colorful city. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the next question, uh, chinos or jeans? I always wear chinos. I only have one type of trouser. That is a chinos <laughs> blue. I have five pair of them and I just use the same <laughs> trouser all the time. That's a very engineering answer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's nothing um, wrong with that. I, talk, I, I do that now. I've got like, I just wear mostly blue jumpers. Yeah. I've got five, five blue jumpers. Blue. I've got three white shirts. Yes. Yeah. We're getting laughed at now by uni because we don't have our... <laughs> Yeah. Similar. Where does one go on a perfect road trip? Perfect road trip. Um, I've, I, I have been always doing road trips in the south of Spain. Oh. around the coast with my mm -hmm. friends and it's it's my perfect road trip i don't know if it's the perfect for everyone but like we'll really recommend it that's really nice um what will you do on a rainy day well try to as much as you can embrace the rain i think it's something mm -hmm. beautiful uh and instead of trying to avoid it try to enjoy it as much as you can I'm sure you can do that a lot in uk yeah. yeah. <laughs> Having said that, in UK it's quite a specific type of rain as well. It's not. It's not con in comparison, for example, where where I grew up in in Spain, when mm -hmm. when it rains, it really rains. In in UK, is what we call in oh. Spain chirimiri. Is that this type of uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> specific type of rain that you you, you can uh, you don't even know it's raining and it's raining. Yeah. yeah, very subtle. Yeah, I agree. Um, what is your favorite exercise? Uh, I like to go to the swimming pool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm quite lucky that I uh, live quite nearby uh, the Olympic uh, swimming pool in London. 
built by Saha Hadid. So it feels like, uh, yeah, it's such a pleasure to be able to, to go and swim there. Wow. That was so cool. Um, what was your word subject in school? <laughs> As I mentioned before, anything related with languages, uh, I was really, <laughs> yeah, not, not, not the most talented. <laughs> What is your spirit animal? Uh, my spirit animal, my family from my grandma's side, they were called the frogs. So mm -hmm. I think I identify quite well with a frog. Uh, probably it's not the best animal in all in in one specific terrain, but like they can, it's an animal can be in the water, a bit jumping in the air and in land. So I think I'm uh, it's quite versatile. So I, I think I identify myself with that. Well, they're good at design. Yeah. Frog. <laughs> I don't know by that Gemini though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <sure. laughs> well, what do you usually eat for breakfast? Uh something quite simple, like some some granola and some banana uh, with milk. Healthy. Um, mm -hmm. What do you eat for dinner then? Um it really depends. At the moment I'm living uh with friends in a shared uh place and it's quite lovely that uh every day one of us cook. So it really depends. Uh, could be French cuisine, it could be Turkish cuisine, it could be Spanish cuisine. So it, it, it could be Greek cuisine. So it, it really depends who whose turn is. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you do cooking more or baking more? Cooking, absolutely. Yeah, I, I like to cook salty things and uh, little tapas, and uh, it's uh, yeah, I'm I'm not too into baking. Wow, sounds really good. Um. <laughs> What is something that you wish you could be good at? Um, something that I could be really, but again, coming back to languages, I really admire <laughs> people <laughs> who, who are really well, uh, really good at communicating. And even in Spanish, I really admire people who are really precise with languages. And uh, I had a conversation not long time ago with a philosopher and uh, the wow. precision and uh, the way that some people are able to use languages and, and describe things is, is something that I will, I, I will wish I was better at. Yeah. That's a really admirable skill. Mm. Um, being or serving. Um, so I have been a skin lately, but, uh, I really like surfing, not with a board, but like, I like to swim with the waves. Uh, so body surfing, as some people call it, but like, I like to go with fins into the water and enjoy the waves. Uh, so, so that's, yeah, that has um, been really good. I wish I could serve as well. <laughs> um, when's the first time you failed? Oh, I don't remember, but I suppose <laughs> I have been <laughs> failing since day one, uh, depending <laughs> on how you define failure. But uh, yeah, I think uh, it's a continuous, continuous improvement, <laughs> I suppose, in my life for many different things. So many times in every single day. <laughs> Yeah, constant iterating. Yeah, um, correct. What's the last time you failed? I, again, I think I can name in the last five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you can just go back a few questions and uh, probably four of the five questions I've had been uh, making mistakes and failures in all of them. There's no wrong answer. <laughs> probably one of the uh, failures is not to prepare a bit in advance this question, even if you send <laughs> this question, this interview, even if you send uh, in advance the question. <laughs> But <laughs> you learn from everything. <laughs> um, what color was your prom suit? Prom suit. I don't know if I'm familiar with prom suit. What What do you mean by prom suit? Uh, like the suit you wear to go to like a, a school prom. Ah, in Spain we have a school proms. That's the <laughs> that's the point. Uh, but yeah, sometimes we wear suits for special occasions and normally are quite standard navy colors or gray color, not, nothing fancy. I really like yellow as a, as a color to wear. Yellow suit? Mm -hmm. Not yellow suit, not to that extreme. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> maybe if it's in a suit, yellow the most is the socks and the tie or something like that. But uh, yeah, yeah, I like yellow in a jacket or in a shirt or in a t-shirt. Yeah. You've lost me now. I'm a, I'm a visual learner, so I'm imagining you in a yellow suit just walking down the street, <laughs> you know, in the rain in London. You know, I could try it. I could try it. Yeah, yeah. Off to the design museum with yeah. a red bus coming past and just a clash of color. Yeah, the Spanish flag, red and yellow. 
One. How do you manage stress? Uh, I suppose by sharing it with other people. Uh, mm. So yeah, I'm really lucky to to be able to do this uh, startup with a really good friend with Pierre, and it's, it's, it's a wonderful experience to be able to share good moments and hard moments, basically. And it's how you manage your stress. Yeah, having a good teammate is really important. Yeah. So how do you relax too? I suppose in relaxing, there's as well this social aspect of being able to, to have a laugh and, uh, and share it with someone. But at the same time, I think there is quite a lot of, sometimes, at least from my point of view, uh, personal uh, introspection and, and a bit of reset. Uh, so sometimes I relax, it might sound funny, but like by cleaning my flat or doing laundry uh, are really mundane activities that set me on... Uh, on, on the level zero again and, and it's a pretty good way to relax I have that hanging out washing I have yeah. to do it, I do one item at a time and I'll take it from the kitchen or walk out hang out in the washing line or on the radiator <laughs> and then come back and it'll take me half an hour but it's quite meditative yeah that is good yeah um, <laughs> when uh, is your age that you wanted to become a designer I think since quite early on uh designer slash investor i always kind of yeah enjoy to create things and, and i make things or take things apart or we were speaking before uh before we started to record with richard about legos i, I really enjoy legos or any construction toy so so yeah i think i have been quite early on into creation um apart from art day uh where did you study design so i just start to study architecture that I don't know if you can argue it's a different type of design in the Polytechnic in Madrid. Then I studied product design in the uh, Universidad Pontificia de Chile in Santiago. Uh, I went to CEPT University in Ahmedabad. Then I studied design one year in Umeå, it's a university in the north of Sweden. That is quite well known for one specific type of design, at least. And then, uh, yeah, Royal College of Art and Imperial College of London. Those have been a bit my alma maters. And then I had the, the chance as well to keep my academic career for, for a while, not as a student, but as a researcher or as a, as a lecturer. And I had been able to, I, I had been teaching for seven years in Kingston University, which had been really good. Uh, this year I'm teaching in Central St. Martins, a university in London. Wow. And before I was, uh, I did a few teaching as well as a visiting lecture in different universities, mostly in, uh, mostly in Europe, but as well sometimes in Cornell University in the States. I've been really enjoying that experience in, yeah, and in other parts. What an exciting journey. Mm -hmm. um, what is your favorite designer of all time? Uh, I would say back Mr. Fuller. I don't know if it's considered a designer or among all the many different things, but uh, yeah. Yeah. Or even if you want to come back a bit more, even in history, like uh, Leonardo da Vinci is always like really incredible on in his thoughts. But yeah, I would say back Mr. Fuller. Totally oh, agree. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's the best design advice you've ever received? Best design advice I have ever received. Um, Mm, uh, it's hard to say probably more than the advice itself is the methodologies um, and how to approach uh, brainstorming for example or ideation that opened my mind quite a lot um, so so yeah and, and sometimes even the, the worst advices had been the ones that had motivated me much more uh, for example in the, my first studies in architecture had been super traditional and they were Disencouraging everyone to create or to to invent new things, and and those things like really fire me up and uh, put me on the other extreme. So sometimes it's it's even good <laughs> to have this type of bad advices to to spark uh, other type of reactions. That's the thing with architectural crits. The professors will rip the students apart. It doesn't happen yeah. in any other design areas. I do not know why. And I, I've taught across like yourself various designers, and you just sit there going. You're ripping them apart. Where they're, they're you're destroying their creativity. Yeah. They're effectively just going to go away and not be a design, you know, architect anymore. They're, you know, yeah. is it a 
this what happens in architecture practices or I don't know, or is it it's the university professors thinking they're, you know, they've got a chip in their shoulder because they never made it as an architect themselves. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. I don't know where this culture comes from. Uh, in Spain, for example, what I know is that the university where I start to study or where, where I finish my studies, um, they start with 5,000 students and they have to, from those 5,000 students, almost half of them have to be gone in the first year. So it's a quite uh, brutal way of uh, <laughs> educating or selecting people in a way. Uh, so probably they have been driven a bit this culture of, uh, I don't know, instead of encouraging people, trying to push them down. But I, I, I don't know. I, I agree. And it's not, it's, 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 it's not to generalize, but, uh, but yeah. So on to the next question. Um, Trent, you would like to see disappear forever? Uh, yeah, single single use plastic uh, <laughs> for for this type of applications that didn't last more than a few minutes in the people's hands. So I suppose that that would be great to, to see it disappear forever. Yeah, so we agree. Um, Mac or PC? Uh, I normally use Macs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, how do you know if you are a designer? Ah, you have solved a problem, probably you're a designer. Doesn't matter <laughs> what type of problem it is. And if you want to call yourself a designer, I think you, you are in your own right. <laughs> probably that's as well where architects and designers are a bit different. Normally to be able to call yourself a, an architect, you have to pass a specific exam or have a license or, but like, I think everyone could be a designer. And I think that's, that's beautiful. Uh, I really like the fluidity in the concept of designer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what's the television show we've been banked on recently? Maybe related with design, like the abstract series of Netflix that have been yeah. really good. Oh, there we watched the Nerry Ox one just for Christmas. Mm. The, the, screen, <laughs> the, the um, sharing one. Yeah. yeah, I just like that. I actually like the one in typeface. That yeah. one's really good. Yeah, they're just, I think I need to go watch them again, actually. <laughs> they're pretty good. I really like the toy design one as well. The toy design one is my favorite one, absolutely. Yeah, because it, it gets you thinking back to what we are talking about with Lego. When Lego yeah. first started, it was just about imagination. But now with the kits, and she, she mentioned that show, it's about, with most Lego kits now, you build them and then they're just left. And I noticed that with my children. But if you get the brick bricks out with no instructions, they just keep playing for hours and hours and hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, there's emergence of creativity. <laughs> um, who do you turn to when you're sad? Mm, my good friends or my family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, last question. Name one thing you've learned the hard way. I don't know if it's the hard way, but like, uh, again, coming back, I'm going to repeat myself, but English or languages. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I'm still, uh, str I'm still to, struggling. Yeah, yeah. But like for me, in order for, for me to learn English, my, my parents had to drop me in Canada when I was 15 without knowing too much about it. And I had, a, at the beginning, I had a really hard time. Then I, it was one of the best times of my life. But, but yeah, it was the hard way, definitely. And yeah, the most useful way. It's kind yeah. of though, they'll just apologize on your behalf. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, over to Richard. If you could make a documentary about anything, what would it be? A documentary about everything. I, about anything. Mm, mm. Hmm. Maybe some some of the favorite designers that I had been looking at or admiring, like coming back on back Mr. Fuller, or I, I suppose having the time to go a bit deeper on that, that that will be great. Um other topics, I suppose looking into issues or challenges that we have as a society, that will be great. Or uh going a bit deeper into I don't know, philosophy. I'm really intrigued as well by by that type of uh, I don't know how how I will approach it because it's not my medium, but uh, but yeah, I, I really love to to explore that. Yeah, having a documentary, what with Sir Fuller and abstracts uh, and design, that'd be rather cool. I think it'd yeah. be a retrospective. <laughs> anyway, 
got me thinking. What is your kryptonite? What is my kryptonite? Uh, I would say people in general or life. Like, uh, yeah. Kryptonite, you mean kryptonite is something that gives you energy, right? No, no, the opposite. Takes your ah, energy away. <laughs> Sorry. <Yeah. laughs> uh, what is my kryptonite? Maybe the lack of people or the lack of uh, interactions. That's probably a bit the, the opposite. Yeah. yeah, I think a lot of people found that during COVID and in lockdowns. No, no. Far. Exactly. Hmm. What are you most enchanted by? Ooh, I really like things that falls or moves or uh, I'm, I'm really enchanted by those type of objects in particular. Things that transform. Kinetic architecture. Kinetic yeah. design. Yeah. Uh, I have been working quite a lot with uh, before uh, the work that I'm doing now into foldable structures, for example, having always really fascinated by by those type of uh, yeah, scissor systems. Coming back a bit to back, Mr. Fuley, he has a few. Yeah. Jack Hoberman, I don't know if you uh, know this designer it's from We're New York. Yeah. Well. yeah. <laughs> Origami and Mirari and yeah. Really enjoy this type of uh, I think it's quite fascinating and uh, the attention goes quite into it but I really like as well magic in a way and get quite enchanted by by magicians as well yeah, what is your biggest strength mm, I suppose I'm quite um, coming back to the frog quite comfortable in different type of scenarios situations so I'm quite versatile Probably is my biggest weakness as well. A lot of people <laughs> during my career, they say like, oh, you have quite a big lack of focus. Probably it's true. Uh, but I suppose that's, that's a bit strength and weakness at the same time. Well, that's just the next question. Your biggest weakness as well. Do yeah, like probably yeah. I will say that. Yeah. There's a good one. What three words, use three words to describe not plot. I would say making packaging disappear. That, that's our mission. Wow. Three words. It's like you prepared for this. <laughs> I, I haven't been prepared for this, but I didn't. I didn't describe this. But like uh, for for many years, I was a um, was an improv actor, so I, I used to to do quite a lot of improv. So I, yeah, <laughs> it's it's about about these other things that we were talking about: embracing mistakes and and not uh, being okay with blocking yourself or unblocking yourself with certain questions. But no. No, no, I didn't prepare this. <laughs> That's good anyway. Most important thing on planet Earth? I would say life. I suppose that's the most important thing because like if it's a death planet, no one will, will like will, no one will be there. So I suppose if we, we are able to preserve life, and by life I mean not only human life, but any type of yeah, life that is around, I think it's it's the most essential thing. There's a there's a so for one. What's the most important advice you'd give your future children? Coming back as well to a previous question, I will I will say the same thing that my mom told me of like try to become a good person. I suppose that's the most important thing. Yeah, I agree. Best first date idea. First date idea. Ooh. Um <laughs> had been single last year so I, I had a, a few first dates uh <laughs> one one funny one we i don't know why uh she mentioned that she wanted to do a stool so we we spent the day doing a, a stool a wooden stool that was quite nice uh nice date that's a different one well done no. wow. <laughs> and you still see, uh, yeah you still yeah, see in the her. workshop sorry are you still dating uh, not at the moment. Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm taken. <laughs> okay, we'll move on. Right. Favorite type of plant. We've got a selection here. Uh, favorite type of plants. I really like plants. Uh, I have, I have a few plants. Um, I, I will say I always get fascinated by avocados, <laughs> avocado pits and how they grow out of nothing. That's, that's really Lovely, or like the classic cheese plant or monstera mm. is always as well really impressive to to see them growing and the, the big leaves that they have are always really beautiful. Yeah, I've got two avocado plants here. Yeah, I can see as well. Do you have a aloe vera there? 
Yeah, I know. I've got yeah. four or five of them. I've got two pineapple yeah. plants I've grown from pineapples I got from the supermarket as well. Oh, wow. Nice. I, I love that. Uh, every time you can grow a fruit from something that you get in the supermarket, it's like, a, yeah, it's, it's the best thing ever. It's like having a present. Imagine you could do that with packaging. Will we say, man, if you have a piece of plastic packaging and you can put the tap and a new tree of bottles will grow that's incredible and it's not something that we appreciate uh with fruits and we should appreciate more basically yeah exactly what do you notice first about someone when you meet them and it's, you can't just say are they wearing jeans or chinos <laughs> <laughs> um i suppose uh, uh how they look or if they look at you or not. I suppose that's one of the things that you notice quite uh, immediately and tells you quite a lot about that person. Okay, good. What's your guilty pleasure? What's my guilty pleasure? Um, <clears throat> I don't know if it's so guilty, but like uh, fruits, having fruits quite often. Uh, Especially fruits that they are not easy to eat, like pomegranates or things like that. That's one of my my pleasures. I don't, yeah, I don't know how guilty that pleasure is, but uh, yeah, and and doing it at uh, really weird times, like just before dinner, for example, or things like that. You could have pomegranate in your dinner. Pomegranate and you can, couscous. Yeah. Pomegranate and couscous salad's really nice. I'm just getting hungry yeah. now. So <laughs> maybe we'll share a recipe for that in the notes. Right. Last question. What are your plans for the weekend? Uh, as I mentioned, I just arrived yesterday night to Lisbon. So after to the end tomorrow of working a bit remotely, I plan to discover as much as I can the city. I've been here several times, but uh, not recently. So I'm looking forward for that. Amazing. Yeah. Traveling is just so much fun. Never yeah. been to Portugal, actually. Mm -hmm. Lisbon. Oh, well, thank you very much. So that's the 73 rapid fire questions, which we got through. Thank you. Amazing time. So um, before we wrap up, let's ask you a couple of questions about not plan. We've covered mm -hmm. little bits about it and understood more about you. So how did you and Pierre come up with the idea um, for uh, ooh, or ooh, your packaging? Sure. So I was working on different projects. I was working on making artificial clouds that could get uh, water from the sea, evaporate uh, the water, and being able with water vapor or to create buoyancy and, and float like big balloons, and being able to deliver that water in places where it's needed. And when I was facing the the challenge of how to deliver water, I really wanted to avoid the use of plastic because I had been really conscious of of that problem for a while and doing some projects around it. So I started to experiment with all the type of materials that they are not plastic uh, that could encapsulate water or the type of liquids. And, and I suppose we arrived to, to see it as a, as a first starter and, and it kind of started to work after testing quite a lot of different things. And, and that's a bit how we came up with the idea and still Still an idea on uh, on his infancy shape and starting to continue to be improved, but like yeah, that's that's how it started. No, it's really really why good. Rocks left. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, why sleeping rocks left? Ah, because we, <laughs> uh, at that point we didn't have the ambition of of making a, a business. And uh, I, or we decided to to do this uh, competition last minute. We have to find a name for the company besides for the product. And uh, we were in New Zealand in this trip that I was mentioning before with Pierre and Guillaume, two of my best friends from these masters. And we were in that trip doing a lot of uh, but now we, coming back to languages, now we understand it's not called skipping rocks, it's called skimming stones. So doing a lot of uh, on the on the lakes, uh, throwing uh, stones to, to bounce them on the lakes. And at that time as well, Lab, it was quite a uh, trendy name for a studio. So we decided to call skipping rocks Lab, trying to make in packaging disappear and rocks fly. <laughs> but then, then we not? have to change the name yeah why not and then uh, a funny story as well like the first couple of years the the website it was the video of our holidays uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're actually not doing any work 
Yeah, and then when we when we start to have uh, employees, some of the in a in a really nice way they were started to ask guys i think we should change the names i don't think this is a great name and so we had to go through a rebranding exercise uh to to call us like not plan now which uh yeah. mm -hmm. well i still like skipping rocks lab maybe someday come back to that <laughs> So here's a question for you because we've um, looked into this a lot regarding biomaterials and what what are the main challenges you managed to overcome when you were developing your um, seaweed solution? Well, there's quite a lot of challenges. Like first, uh, I suppose all the materials normally are benchmarked against plastic and they are different in terms of uh, properties and where they come from and what you can ask. So it's really hard to start with, with that expectations, I would say, in terms of how a material should perform or should, should act. Uh, so I suppose that's one of the, the challenges and, and, and that have many aspects from price to scale to barrier properties to logistics, etc. So it's, it's trying to understand how we can yeah, offer alternatives to plastic, but uh, that can be better in certain things. And one is one of the things that we're trying to do, to try to make things that plastic cannot do, like you can eat it or uh, you can put flavors into it or smells or making it disappear in one way or another. But uh, yeah, you, can, you cannot copy plastic in all the characteristics of plastic because you will end up with plastic basically. So it's try to understand which ones you can, which characteristics of it you need to compromise and which one you need to enhance depending on which applications you want it for. Exactly, and you're seeing that with, you know, like example being like Australia banning, um, you know, bioplastics mm -hmm. supply chain because it's effectively it's just another plastic and it's not getting sorted into either compo industrial level composting or into, um, you know, it's getting taken away to be burned. So it just messes up all the systems around. There is an yeah. interesting thing, question. And I remember from the, you remember that grape inspired um, packaging solution? It was a number of years ago coming from MIT, um, the one where they put flavors on the outside. And th they were designed to basically serve like ice creams and sauces and the issues mm -hmm. they found. And then when they started selling them through supermarkets and whole food suppliers, they ended up, even though they were meant to take away packaging, the suppliers were selling them in plastic bags. So how mm -hmm. do you get away that, to, from having packaging inside packaging? Good question as well. So it really depends. At the moment, we are conscious that our packaging is not for all the uses. So it's, it's not, uh, or we don't have any product at the moment that is capable of resisting a two-year supply chain and being a shelf of a supermarket. Uh, so we try to avoid that. Uh, um, but we have a solution that could could work for quite well for uh, short time consumption and low volumes. So we're trying to focus on on replacing plastic on those type of occasions. For example, running events or uh, festivals or things like that. So in, in that way, we we transport things in a really similar way as fruits are transported. Uh, so we have sometimes crates, secondary crates where we have like a few hundreds of, of these and then we handle to, to the runners. Depending on the, what type of product or what type of application or context, again, we, we come back to biomimicry and understand how fruits as well do that. And sometimes we make peelable layers, for example, or uh, sometimes we play a, uh, as well with segments similar to an orange where you can open it and you have a small segment. So you we can do a bit the same of having a secondary layer that you can eat or you cannot eat that protects internal layers. So that's a bit how we try to approach. I suppose the other things you could start looking at there is actually, yes, we use plastic to transport it, but it could be something that's been recycled. That it's not going to a large container that will always get used and used. I mean, yeah. I get my food from Good Club and it's zero waste delivery, zero carbon deliveries, and mm -hmm. but you're, it still comes in plastic and then you take it out of that. So, because it, as we all know, plastic is a nice material. It's just we've mm -hmm. not found a way to keep it in the intended use. And it's back to that Correct. single use of a straw or a cup or like you mentioned, Correct. festivals of people just taking things, taking a drink. It's been in use for 30 seconds. It's had a dormancy life of, you know, months or years sitting on a shelf to be actually be useful for 30 seconds. 
Correct. That's I think uh, plastic as a material is incredible how we have been able to move as a society in uh, almost a hundred years from petro- crude oil, basically, or petroleum to something that we use everywhere uh, to package water, to package and to to be really lightweight, to to be able to protect food so, so well. But at the same time, yeah, it's, it's, it's a big issue when we don't use it in the right way. And, and again, trying to put in perspective uh, our own material or not itself is, is not uh, is not the only solution or is not the, the solution that could somehow uh, contribute to solving the, the whole problem. We always think as well that uh, it's, not, it's not our thinking, but like I think it's shared among a lot of people that first reducing the amount of packaging that is the, the first step reducing so if you can reuse a container you should and then yeah for for those things when uh, you need either to recycle or to to compost this is where we can start to see if there is a an alternative but but yeah so that's why we are focusing on this uh at the moment low consumption moments and uh, short consumption moments and low volume sorry that's good Great. So the last question for you is, um, where do you see not planned five years? So we're, we're working quite a lot with having a portfolio of different products. Uh, so we're working besides OHO quite a lot now on coatings, so on cardboard boxes. We're making films to package dry goods. We are starting to make hard materials. We're making now seaweed paper. So hopefully we see us having a a portfolio of different solutions that hopefully by then in five years time, they will be having significant impact because I think until now we have created these solutions and make around, I don't know, half a million units of each of them, but it's, that's not enough impact for us. So hopefully we are now in the, in five years time on the, on the, I don't know if to say billions, but uh, yeah, of, of plastic items replace it. Uh, that will be really good. And, and yeah, being a bit like the, Sometimes we like to fantasize, like saying, like the sustainable tetra pack, uh, and try to do things with with conscious of uh, not only of of the product that we package, but of our context and planet and, and oceans. So that's a bit where I would love to see not plan five years. Then. That's a beautiful vision. Yeah, thank you. Um, so thank you, Roger, time, Rodrigo. Um, this has been Richard and Yuning for the uh, Food Innovation Podcast. And if you want more information on NotPla, we will share that in the show notes and the links. Afterwards, I'd just like to thank Rodrigo for enduring the 73 questions and answering our questions as well. Uh, We will share all the links to NotPla and various other um, initiatives in the show notes. So thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. Uh, This has been Richard and Good afternoon. Bye.